Hi, and welcome to the Pro Yaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 26, The Golden Age of Rookies. I was recently tasked with writing an article with the theme of The Golden Age of Rookies for the upcoming issue of Baseball Magazine. That'll be out the 19th of next month here in Japan. Unfortunately, history is kind of my weak point. So I can't just name a time period when there were a lot of great rookies. What I really needed in order to do this kind of research is some sort of methodology. So the first thing I needed to do is define what a rookie is and what a golden age is. So first, what is a rookie? According to the official rules determining a player who may qualify for, for the Rookie of the Year award, a rookie up to and including 1975 was any Japanese player who was participating in his first pennant race. From 1976 and on, that uh, definition had a couple of qualifying conditions. That is, a new player who had 30 innings or less as a pitcher or up to 60 plate appearances for a fielder slash batter. Um, the definition has been tweaked a little bit since then, but for the most part, those are the two main definitions for a rookie qualifying for Rookie of the Year. The other thing I need to know is, what is a golden age? How does one define a golden age? How does one determine what a golden age is? So, for this I turned to Wikipedia. Wikipedia defines it as, Invariably, the term golden age is bestowed retroactively when the period in question has ended and is compared with what followed in the specific field discussed. Um, please look up Golden Age on the English Wikipedia if you uh, are interested in more definitions of Golden Ages and what various Golden Ages have occurred in the past. Um, looking at the Japanese Wikipedia, the definition is pretty much the same, but in their definition for the modern term usage, they include that it generally refers to sports players, uh, celebrities, and other pop culture when referring to a golden age. So, for this particular study, what I'd really like to do is treat all players the same. Um, and I don't really want to just include super rookies. What I want is to include those players who proved themselves to be very good at pro yaku. Um, you know, those historical figures either in the Hall of Fame or certainly of caliber to be in the Hall of Fame. And... I don't necessarily want just those players who had a great rookie year and perhaps a good career. I want those who, people who had a great career regardless of how they performed as a rookie. So to that end, I grabbed a list of players that Jim Albright had ranked in his best historical players in pro yaku back in 2004 yeah that uh, article is a little old but it will suffice in that it's got a lot of historical players ranked in its results once i had the players i looked up their debut seasons and created a histogram to see if there were any patterns. So first, we have the players. I marked up their debut and official rookie year according to the uh, 1976 
version of what a rookie is. But I just stuck with the debut year for this study. Uh, next, I created the histogram in order to find some patterns. So looking at this, the first thing I see, of course, is 1936 had a lot of fabulous players come in who went on to greatness. Um, but if you consider that every player in the league was considered a, a rookie in 1936, that's not really saying anything. I don't think I want to call the year that everybody was a rookie the golden age of rookies. So looking down, I see 1969 and 1981 both stand out very much. This one doesn't really pull out some of the rookies that I was kind of hoping to see. So what I did was I grouped these by um, every, uh, what, half decade, except for the war years. Okay, 1936 I have on its own, because, as I said, everybody was a rookie. 1937 to 39 was the rest of the 30s. The 1940s, I also grouped all together. So we see 13 really outstanding players come into the league in the 1940s. Now, there were certainly a lot of issues happening in the 1940s, as you may recall. There were not a lot of able-bodied men joining NPB, and those who had joined NPB were not necessarily able to stick around for long. Um, but when we go to 1950, uh, the, 19, the first half and second half of the 1950s had 15 outstanding players in each half decade come into the league. And... You may recall 1950 is when the league expanded into two leagues. Um, and at the very beginning, there was a lot of expansion. They went up to uh, 15 teams in 1950. And thereafter, they slowly contracted. So the first part of the 1950s, you have the big expansion boom where a lot of talent was starting to get diluted but the talent that did make it, quite a few of them stuck around. The second half of the 1950s, competition got a little bit harder as the various leagues were starting to contract back down to their current 12 teams, six teams in each league. So those rookies in that time period had a lot more competition because it went from a diluted league into uh, slowly willowing out those who didn't belong for this entire decade. And I think that that contributes to so few new rookies in the first half of the 1960s. But then look at the second half of the 1960s. 16 uh, people who would go on to the Hall of Fame or just be ranked very high in Albright Son's study came in in the second half of the 1960s. It's as though the league kind of balanced out and rookies were once again starting to come in and compete for jobs with veterans and do well. Uh, 1970s saw a slow decline in the number of rookies who were able to hack it. Uh, 1980s, uh, 1981 in particular, saw a bump. Um, and one of the things that was happening during the late 1970s, early 1980s, was teams were being sold between each other. So I think that one aspect is new owners coming in and basically being able to clear out the veterans, bring in rookies who 
really turned things around. And as we go closer and closer to 1992, Jim Albright's study went a bit beyond that. But it's starting to get to where there wasn't enough data to really determine a lot of the more prevalent players. So I just cut off the study at that point. But still, looking at this, there's no real clear victor. There's no real clear era that I would call the golden age of rookies. So I clumped a lot of the years together with time periods that had two or more for the most part. And this is what I got in the kind of orange-pink color. Uh, 1936 to 1942. Now, this time period, I would call the foundational period more than I would the golden age of rookies. Okay? This is when pro Yaku was defined. A lot of players came in during this time, uh, and they made pro Yaku what it is. So this time period, golden age of rookies, maybe, but it's really setting the foundation for pro Yaku. Then there's the decade of the 1950s, and this is the decade when Nagashima and O oh and actually a lot of the Giants V9 players uh, entered the Giants. So the 1950s saw a fabulous growth in Pro Yaku, once again due to the expansion, and then this quick contraction that happened after expanding to whittle out those players who were maybe borderline to begin with. The competition in order to stay in was very great, and I think that that helped mold a lot of the rookies during this time period. Could that be the Golden Age? Well, it was at least the expansion era. So, well, expansion and contraction era. So, it's kind of got a, another label for itself. And finally, there was 1962 to 1971. I wanted to keep uh, it 10 years in order to be fair a fair comparison with the expansion era. And this time period did see quite a few very good players come in. And, of course, this is one of the two that had a year with seven players entering. But one of the really interesting aspects of this game is that there was only one player who entered as a giant who made the list for Albright during this time period. That would be because the 1950s saw the Giants build that incredible V9 team. So... After the Giants had built their team, the rookies who came in afterward were basically competing against the Giants. They were either in the Pacific League and competing against the Giants for publicity, or they were in the Central League and actually competing against some of the best-known players in Japanese baseball history. So... Might this have been the golden age of rookies? So, what do you think? What was the golden age of rookies to you? Um, and, you know, is there another way I could have done this to determine what the golden age of rookies are? I'd really like to hear what you think on the matter. And now it's time for the pocket calendar. Interleague play is now done and over, so the teams in the two leagues will now go back to competing against each other in their same leagues. The next big event on the Pro Yaku calendar will be the All-Star Series, coming in at the end of July. Tomorrow, June 24th, we'll be welcoming John back to Japan 
as John and Jim get together for this week's Japan Baseball Weekly Podcast. In this episode, Jim Allen got together with the returning Chris Carter of the Saitama Seibu Lions. The two plan on talking about various happenings in Pro Yaku this past week, including the game where Otani for Nippon Ham played both pitcher and right field. The two also plan on answering some user questions. I know I'm looking forward to it. Sure you are too. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaku Report. Thank you for joining me. Till next week, take care. <laughs>